Okay, we are recording our session. Uh, good evening, everybody. So this is our second session, and I'm Yelena. So this is an agenda for tonight. We're going to talk about the custom data visualizations. We'll talk more about the dashboards and infographics, creating a storybook, how to use a storybook, analytics exchange site, uh, team folders, and then there is a bonus. I'll show you how to join data sets. Okay, if they have common in column. All right, so some reminders here. Uh, for the purpose, whenever you use button analytics or any cloud environment, forget about the browser uh, back and forward button. You want to use the menu instead. And the deletion is permanent. There is no recycle bin. The way you would, if you deleted something on your PC, it goes to recycle bin, you can recover it. Right? There is no just such a thing in the cloud environment. Now, uh, while I was talking about the custom visualization is, remember earlier, uh, you created visualization just by typing in the question. But if you scroll down, you'll see this, right? This section here, where you could literally pick the visualization that you want to build and just drag and drop the fields that you want to show. So let me go ahead and see here it is. Do you remember we used the risk students, right? Data was the last presentation. I'm going to continue with this data set now. So look, what that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna click here, right? Remember that last time we were looking at the suggested starting points and we were asking questions here. Right, and it would give us the suggestions based on the question we typed. Now I'm going to take a slightly different approach. I'm going to scroll down in here and I'm going to create my own custom visualization. Just as an example, let me pick this one. That's one of my favorites because here on this one, it allows you to look at the actual, uh, actual numbers. Now, Let's see what we have here. These are called the data slots, right? And if there is an asterisk here, it means that it's a required data slot. In, into each of the slots, you must provide the fields. Like those are basically the column headings and the row headings. And the cell would be the actual data that you want to show. Like, let's do an example. As an example, we are going to select here county. Well, to select the field, I can just do this. I can just click here and then I find my field in this drop down, right? Or if the drop down is too long, I can type in here if I know the field name. So I'm going to select county, right? Look, this, this is a county, right? Every row is going to be the county. Every column, I want to show the class rank, right? Well, okay. Now, for the cell, cell is going to be my summary data and I want to show the student GPA. So, I'm going to click here and I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on, I'm going to type student GPA. Actually, it's here. I don't need to search for it. So, here it is. Now, I'm getting this data here, this table. Uh, look at this. So, here, this is Albany, New York County and this is the fourth quartile. Right, and this is the average student GPA. I'm looking at the average, right? How do I know if I hover my mouse here, right? It says the average GPA and it shows me the actual number. Over here, this cell is blank. It means that I don't have anybody uh, in the fourth quartile who lives in this county. Well, here, blank means nobody, I, not applicable, so to speak. I don't have any data that fits into this category, right? So what this slot means, multiplier, uh, sometimes I want to have a separate chart per gender perhaps. So that's what I'm going to do. I put a multiplier and it's going to do two charts per gender. Well, one reason I would do this is that if I want to compare, if there is a difference by the, in the, in the GPA b between genders, right? Well, I see some, right? So this is one way to do the comparison here. You just put the gender here. And now let's do this. Let's, let's rename this. And I'm going to name it as, let's say, GPA for plus rank. 
and county, right? Well, let's name it like this. Well, the reason I need to name it is that later on, when you try to add this visualization to your display, you go in, you, you, you will know what's in the top, right? I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, but before we, we start creating displays, let's create more uh, visualizations. Well, the reason I want to create visualization here in a discovery world was because I want my visualization to be reusable. Uh, if I want to use it in more than one, uh, in, in more than one uh, display, so to speak. So now here, well, what we did is we have actual numbers, right? But sometimes you're gonna be in a situation when the number does not matter. You want to look at the actual relative comparison, so to speak, right? So if this is the case, more likely you're going to choose the, the heat map, right? Well, yeah, this is a comparison heat map. Heat map can also be used to show the relationship, but in our scenario, let's, let's choose the comparison and in here, I'm going to pick the, let's say the class size. Here it is, right? Every row is going to be our class size, but in this case, a class size is a discrete. It's not the actual number, it's rather the range, right? So now uh, for the columns, I want to pick the class rank, right? Here it is. Now for the, the color code, let's do the student count. But how do I do the, uh, actually student cost, sorry. Student cost, student cost, let's do it this way now. Okay, so now, and I want to look at it by gender. So I put it in a multiplier, right? Okay, see this? Well, the difference here is that I don't get to see the actual number. Instead, I see the color. And the higher is the color, uh, the, the darker is the color, the higher is the cost. But I'm not interested in a grand total. I'm interested in a average cost, right? So watch here. Some of you asked me how to do it. I right click, then here is a summarize, and I'm gonna pick the average, okay? More likely you're gonna look at this. And then you probably want to do comparison by gender. See this here is a fourth quartile, and here is a class size, right? So you probably want to say that for the class size, right? Then 100 to 200 and the fourth quartile, that's where you see the, the difference between male and female, right? Yeah, so that's how you would analyze this. And also you could add another variable here if you like, right? Then you're gonna repeat it again. So if I add something like an oscillate, I believe I'm gonna repeat it four times. Yeah, see this? I'm gonna be repeating it for each combination of oscillate and gender, but to delete this, you just do remove, okay? You can also you can also apply the filter because here at the bottom, you've got the data tray where you can define the filter. But let's do this. I'm going to save this. I'm gonna look at this, let's say, let's just say it's student cost, right? Well, okay. Now, what I have to do is, this is important. I have to say the whole discovery workbook and I'm gonna put it in a personal area and I'm gonna save it as, oops. <laughs> it saved it as new discovery set. I don't like the name, but well, I guess I could rename it later. Later I can rename it, but this is not a descriptive name. This is not good what I just did, but. Okay, well, uh, let's see. Suppose that we want to see the differences. We want to see the relationship perhaps between uh, class size and class rank, right? So how do we do the relationships? Remember that we've got this network diagram here, right? So now I have to and from and the line width, so to speak. So what I'll do here for the uh, from, I'm going to pick the class size, right? So let me see, this is a class size, right? So for the two, I'm going to pick something like a class rank, class rank, and here, the line width, I could perhaps, I want to look at the change in GPA, right? So 
uh, I want to look not overall GPA, but probably the change. So I don't see what I'm looking for. I can just go in and type in here and it's gonna find the column for me. Okay, here it is, see this? So here is basically the thickness of a line is gonna tell you the relationship strengths, right? So let's rename it. So I'm gonna call it as, uh, let's say a uh, change in GPA, right? Well, usually you're gonna call something more meaningful, but I'm showing you what can be done, right? So now here, do you see this asterisk? It means that my last change has not been saved. We need to save it. So to save it, I click here. See, this? this is a menu, but when I tap on the menu, by default, it's gonna just select the first choice. So I can just tap here, it will save. While it's saving, do not click on the X button. Do not uh, stop. Because basically when you start something, you try to stop it, it starts another process. So just let it save it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, let it take it time, okay? But for me, it has been cooperating so far. Now, uh, one of my favorite visualizations, another one is a map, let's take uh, the map here. If your data has something like a, a geographical information and you want to look how something changes by the country, you're gonna do, you're gonna add this map, see this? Geospatial analysis. And you're probably going to, uh, in this case, I'm gonna look at the county, right? Because see this here, I want to pick a region. It's something that can be on a map, right? County, county. Oops, Elena misspelled it. Here it is, see this? This is a county. So here I'm going to do, this is a county, but right now you see it kind of looks strange. It's because I have not specified uh, anything else. See this? I, I want to look at the uh, overall GPA. So this is my GPA here. So now this color code means, actually means the overall GPA. The darker is the higher. Uh, and this is an average, right? I see it says an average. Now, the plus side of this is that I can show more. I can show more in here, see this? Uh, I can use the little bubble inside, right? I can add a little bubble inside. So that allows me to show two more variables. In this case, I want the side of the size of the bubble to be the number of absences, right? And of course, well, see this, this is a problem. I do not, I do not want to look at the sum, right? I do not want to add up everybody's number of absences. I want to look at the average. So again, right click, summarize, and I'm gonna pick average, okay? And this is applicable only to this visualization. It does not apply to other visualizations that you had. This is at one visualization. If I define it in a data tray, this will apply to the whole workbook. If I define it in a refine, it will apply to all discoveries that I create from the data set. Okay, so where you define it matters. Now, take a look at this. Number of absences is a circle size, but wait a minute, I've got one more. I've got the color, right? And I can do this, let's see the cost perhaps, right? It makes sense to add the cost, student cost, right? And then again, I want to look at the average cost, right? See this? This is a sum, it's doing the sum. But remember, I already adjusted it, but again, the problem is I adjusted it at the visualization itself. I didn't adjust it at the data tray. So I have to go back and do it again, right? Okay, so this is average cost. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to rename this, let's say it's map, right? I'm, I'm just calling funny names. Okay, so now I'm going to do this. I'm going to save this, okay? So I have four visualizations in here. I'm going to, I'm going to return to my landing page and I'm going to create my first display, right? from this four. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Here I need to go to the display tab, right? Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on the new display. I'm in a personal folder, this is important because all work that I save 
has to be seen by me. No one else can access it, right? For right now, just for right now. I'm gonna click on new display. Here, I've got three choices. So we're gonna review this one, and then we're gonna cover infographics and storybook today. So let's go ahead and review the dashboard. I'm gonna click on create. Now, remember that the dashboard can have multiple tabs. We specify the layout uh, for each tab individually, right? So I'm gonna select this one. Uh, you may define the filter on a single tab, or you may define the filter on all top, right? If I put my filter here, I will filter all tabs of the dashboard, or if I put the filter here, this is gonna be this specific top, right? So now, see this, I have four slots in here, in this dashboard. I can add my existing discovery, I can add widgets such as text and uh, shapes and the links to images. What else I could do is I could uh, just add uh, my visualizations. So here I've got several options, right? I'm going to go to the uh, personal right now, right? And here are all of the visualizations that I created and when I created them. So this is one, this one we just created with you, right, with me. See this? Now, take a look at this. My visualization has multiple tabs, and now this is important. Look, I click on here to expand the list of tabs. Uh, the reason I had to name, I had to use descriptive names for my tabs is because right now I have a list of tabs here. If I name them tab one, tab two, tab three, who knows, right, what's in there? I would have to go back and forth, right? I would have to go back to my discovery workbook, check what I have, and then come back here. It, it's a lot, it's difficult, right? So it's a good practice to put descriptive names. Now what I'm going to do, watch. I grab this, drag and drop it. I want to, oops, I want to put this on top of this arrow because I want the slice of my visualization to be exactly the slice of this slot here. So I want to put my cursor on top of this arrow. There we go. So here it is, right? Now, I, got, I have several options here. Uh, watch, if I click here, this is called the focus mode. I opened up my visualization. This is similar to what you saw in the display view, right? Remember when you did the displays? This is somewhat similar to what you did, right? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, when we did the discovery, <laughs> this is somewhat similar, right? And you've got the format, you can format it, such as changing the backgrounds, changing the colors, etc. right? So I can minimize it now. I'm going to add these guys here. Okay, now I'm going to add this and I'm going to add the map. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is that these visualizations that you add are not necessarily from the same uh, discovery workbook. They could be from different. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to add a new tab in here now, and I'm gonna do this one. And I'm going, look here, this is just a proof of concept. Let's check if the decision trees work. Oh, there we go. So here is the decision tree, right? So guys, this is a proof of concept that your decision trees are up and running again. See this? Well, this was reported to me not working yesterday. It's fixed now, right? And let's add one more tab. And I'm gonna do this. And I'm just gonna add the spiral model, okay? So this is a proof of concept, okay? So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rename the stop and I'm gonna put it as risk drivers, okay? So, and here, this is the second top and I'm going to rename it as risk model, right? And this is my first stop. I'm going to change name and let, let's see, let's click on this. And I'm going to rename it as uh, 
what's a good name for it? Let's say, uh, let's say GPA, whatever we call this, GPA and cost, something like that, right? Well, I'm just being funny here, right? Whatever. Okay, so I have three tabs now, right? Uh, what I could do is I could apply the filters, as you may remember the last class, I showed you how to apply the filters to all tab or to a single tab, right? So here, let, let's also go ahead and save it. Let's save it, save as, and I'm going to save it as, uh, okay, personal folder, and I'm, let's call it student findings dashboard, right? Okay, I'm going to save it now. And it says, okay, let's save it. There we go. So after after this session, tell your instructors that the spiral models was fixed, okay? So now let's go back to, to the landing page in here. Okay, now we are going to add the infographic. The main difference is that infographic is a single page. There are no tops, just a single page. You cannot apply a filter to the group of visualizations. It's either all visualization or no filter at all. So let's do this new display and I'm going to do infographic. I'm going to hit create and I'm going to select this layout, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to personal. Uh, see this, I have uh, the other student here that I played around with. Let me add one visualization here, existing one. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the new one. See this, I can add the new discovery here. But the problem with that is that whatever I add here will not be available for other displays that I create, okay? So just remember it. You can do it, but it won't be available. Okay, so let's do this. Let's click on new discovery. Uh, now, what I have to do is I have to select the data set, right? And it's this one, I remember that. So now, uh, this is going to be like killing two birds in one stone. I'm gonna show you a different visualization here. And uh, let's say, let, let's do the, this one, uh, scroll down. This is a dial, this is another comparison, right? And in this case, watch, I put it in the focus mode and here I want every line here to be the class rank and uh, I want the links to be the student GPA, right? So, or overall GPA, student GPA actually, okay, good. So here it is, right? But again, uh, hopefully it's showing me the average. Yes, it's showing me the average, all right? So this is my visualization. I'm going to minimize this. Now I'm going to add another one. So basically, as we are doing this, I'm showing you available uh, visualizations and their variations, right? So now I'm gonna do the new one, new discovery, and I'm going to select this data set again. And this time I'm going to add a pie chart, but I'm going to do something fancy here. I'm gonna say this, the, this is going to be the class rank, but in here, um, I'm interested to know the number of people. So how do we get the number of people? Well, here is a trick. There is a variable that's actually not in the data set, but it's there. This is called the row. This is called the row. So let me type the rows here. Well, this one, this one is just the row number, right? So what I'm doing here is that I want to count the number of rows, right? I put here, this is rows. It means that the size of each segment is the number of rows, right? So here it is. Now what I want to do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play with the formatting, right? Let me show you what you can do here. I'm gonna click on the format and I'm gonna do this. Uh, 
show, well, I'll leave it as is, but this is, this is a variation. I want to show it as a donut, but for my numbers, I want to do the percentages, right? There we go. So here, I'm going to show the percentages, okay? And similarly, if I wanted to, I could uh, add the borders and everything else, right? I could add the border to it and I could change my uh, color scheme or I can change my uh, background, etc. right? Let's close this out and let me go ahead and uh, minimize this, right? Now, now I'm going to save it and let's save it as, uh, let's save it as student infographic, right? This is student. Okay, I'm gonna do the save. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do another one. And again, this is mainly to show you, uh, this is mainly to show you what, what, what you can do in your uh, assignments, right? Different visualizations. And in here, let's do the, okay, you could do the new discovery, watch. And now I'm gonna do the word cloud. Hopefully it will look nice, but let's see. Uh, here I had to get a little bit creative. Okay, so let's click on the word cloud. And uh, here, I want my words to be the counties, right? I'm gonna do the county. Let's type in here, county. Okay, so here is a county. I selected this, right? Uh, now what else I want to do the here? I want to do the class rank. So basically each county will be repeated uh, if there are four, four quartiles, right, it's going to be repeated four times. But I want the size to be the number of, average number of absences. This is what I want to do, right? Well, right now it's going, it's going like a total. But who cares? Because take a look at this. We cannot really judge by this because we don't know how many students, etc. So... In reality, we want to look at an average here, right? So I'm gonna change my average in here. There we go, right? So now let's minimize. Well, I had to be a little bit creative. Oops, to show you this visualization. Okay, now let's go ahead and hit save. I did not save it, right? So now I'm gonna start building my storybook, right? Well, I have, I have only two displays, but well, let, let's get started, right? And uh, so uh, what I have forgotten is this. I have forgotten to get a copy of an image. I have forgotten to get a copy of an image for, for the next piece, but but let's, let, let's see. Okay, let's do this. Let's go ahead and start working on the storybook. So I'm gonna do new display, watch. I'm going to do expert storybook and let's name it student storybook. Okay. And I'll show you here what I'm talking about. I'm going to go create. Okay. Well, usually, usually when I, when I create the storybook, I usually add the background image, right? But that's all right. Okay. So let's close this out. Okay. This, this is what we're going to do. This is a storybook name, right? Here, I'm going to uh, add a description, right? And this is a character limit. Usually, when I do this, I usually add uh, a picture of an, uh, of an image. But here, well, I don't want to add an error message, but I want to add something like, I, wanted, I want to add an image. Usually, I add the image of the... Uh, what do you call this? Well, I usually add an image of a student, of, of, of student's hat, right? But since I don't, since I don't have that image right now, so let's add something. <laughs> okay, so here is my image. Let's just, let's just assume. So to add an image, you're just gonna click on change background and change and change, and 
set an image, right? I usually add the little hat, graduation hat. But anyways, now let's look at this. Here, this is called the, uh, uh, oops, here, see this drag and drag, drop the display here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, this is a dashboard that I just created. I'm gonna drop and drop here, right? This is going to be my first page, student finding dashboard. Uh, I can tap to add a thumbnail, okay? So let's do this. Uh, I just I just randomly select it, okay? I randomly select the thumbnail. But usually you want to do something that more likely looks like your data. And I'm gonna do this infographic here. So I've got these two pieces right here, right? And I can click to add the thumbnails. Thumbnail, okay, come on. Okay, now, well, these two are editable. By default, this is going to be the same as the name of my uh, dashboard, right? The name of the file that I saved when I created the dashboard. What is this? You can add the notes, right? This is called the annotation. So if I click on it here, this allows me to add a little bit some of the descriptions, right? I can add a description. One thing I wanted to point out is that the more visualizations you have on the top, the longer it will take for your page to load, okay? So, so just, just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, here, the tabs in, a, the tabs in your workbook, in, in your display workbook, must, must be descriptive because if I did not rename them, if it was tab one, tab two, tab three, this is how they would show up in here, right? This is how they would show up in here. So this is another proof of concept. Your decision tree models are working. And let's add a little uh, note. Let's say, right? Usually you would add something descriptive, but I added this explanation, okay? Well, and here I'm going again, and I'm gonna add another explanation here. And I'm gonna say this drivers. So, and again, I'm doing it just to show, well, I selected this visualization intentionally, so to speak, just to show that whatever was not working yesterday works today, okay? Now, what I could also do is I could add the annotations on top of visualizations, but I don't recommend you to do that. It's because as a storybook has an option to reload the data, right? There is an option to reload the new data. Suppose that I label the maximum point on my plot. When I reload the data, my maximum may no longer be a maximum. So you have to be really careful when you put something, label something on top of visualization, okay? So now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm going to save this, okay? Now notice that here, yes, I'm going to save, okay. <laughs> now here, I forgot to show you something. Uh, did you see the eyeglasses? And now they change to pencil. The storybook, similar to the displays, it has two modes, the edit mode and the view mode. So if you see the eyeglasses here, it means that right now you're in the edit mode, you can edit it. If you see the pencil, it means that you are in the view mode, you cannot edit it, right? So now let's click here. Now, right now I'm going to be intentionally in the view mode. I'm right now, I changed my head from developer to a user. So this is how the end user is gonna view your st storybook. There are two pages here, right? The expert tab findings. I'm gonna click in here, right? And I'm, I'm going to start here. This is my first page of the storybook, right? Every page is called the tab findings. And see this? Here is a note that I added, right? Decision tree model and drivers. I added these two. Now here, well, this page, I had four, four visualizations. This is the reason it's taken its time to load. And here, this visualization, this top here, is just one visualization, right? I can just click on the top, 
And uh, this is how I navigate within the same top finding, right? I click the tops. Now, do you remember that I, I uh, added the, the dashboard and also I added the infographic, right? So I've got two top findings. I can click here. This is my second one. This is the infographics that I created. The more visualizations you have, the longer it's gonna take to load, okay? Now here, there are no notes because I did not add any. Uh, another thing to see here is that when I click here, I see the data set that was used to build this uh, storybook. In this case, I have only, I have two uh, displays. See this infographic and dashboard, and I have only one data set, right? Uh, do you see this replaced? In theory, I could, I could replace the current data set with another data set with the same structure, right? Perhaps another sample, so to speak, right? So this is one, one, one reason I suggested not to uh, add the notes on top of the plot itself, because for instance, if you say this is a maximum point, when you replace the data, it could be minimum point, something like that. No, here, this is your data information. Oops, this is a data information, right? Uh, this, this was a fi the file name and the date when uh, it was saved on, uh, on my uh, folder, personal folder. I saved a copy of this file today, okay? So I click here and then I click here to close this out. Now, what else can I do with this? I click on the home button. I look at the top findings. And now suppose that unfortunately I did not get all answers that I was looking for. This is the fun part. And here you can stay up all night, but I'm not gonna do that. See this, I can click on ask question. And yet I can create another visualization, right? I can use, I can ask additional questions based on this storybook and I can create a different visualization. I will be creating another, uh, another discovery, but then I can use the discovery to build another display, and I can add another display as a top finding in here, right? Right now I have two top findings I can add, and I can keep it going and going and going. Well, I promise I'm not gonna do it, but watch what happens. I just added the discovery, right? This is going to be new discovery set, right? I clicked on the suggested visualization and this is going to be just the new discovery. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save it in my folder and I'm gonna say that uh, student discovery to right? Well, I'm just naming it, okay? And then I could go in and I could create another uh, dashboard and then I can add it to my storybook. Now, one thing is that I did not close the storybook. I did not close the file. It still remains open. How do I know if I click on the arrow here, it's gonna show me everything that I have opened. And this is where the problem start. Uh, well, especially if you're sharing the files and I'll get to it shortly. Uh, only. When, you sh when you're sharing a file with your team, only one person can have it open at the same time. So even, even if I log out, right, from my PC, even if I'm completely logged out, uh, if I left this open at the time when I logged out, I keep the lock on this file, right? I keep the lock on this file, I still have it open. Okay, so see this? This is how I get back to this, right? I could also go back to the landing page. I could also go back to the landing page, go to display and click on my storybooks. That's another option, right? Or if it's open, I can come back to it here. This is a storybook. So now what we're gonna do is, well, we were getting to it. Uh, your last assignment, right? Not, 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 not this assignment, but your last assignment. Well, this is a fun part. You go, you're going to be working in groups. Well, you know, when you work on a real work projects, more likely, more likely, it's no longer an individual. You, you are a team, right? So what will happen is uh, week nine, end of week nine, 
your instructor and TA, they will put you in the teams. It is a three to five students per team. And uh, your TA or instructor will email me the team assignments. And what I will do is this. You have, here is a shared folder, right? Click on this. And you will see a folder. Well, here I named it as Spring 2019 Data 610 XXX. But instead of XXX, you're going to see your session number. And this is the only session that you will see. Well, you will still see these two folders. And this is the folder that you'll see Spring 2019 Data 610. Well, an XXX is going to be um, 9040. If you're taking a, a class with uh, Professor Moreta, and uh, another session is uh, 1941, right? So you'll see that. Then you're going to be assigned to the group just for the purpose of this demonstration. Suppose that I'm in group number one. So this is what you will do. You select this and you're going to click on this X, right? And you will see the folder for your team. I'm group number one. When I click on this, I will see all files that were shared with my team. Well, in this case, in this case, I have more. I have subfolders. And well, the reason I created the subfolders because I wanted to show you something. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is how you access your team. Watch. Okay, here, look, personal, personal and shared, right? What you're going to do is this. As soon as your instructor or TA notifies you that Elena finished creating the shared folder, you're going to do this. You're going to click on shared. You're going to click on this plus, right? Oops. You're going to click on this plus. Oh, and now remember, I have this display selected. I want to be on data usually. Okay, look, shared. Now I'm going to find my session. I'm, go I'm going to expand it. Right, I'm going to go here. And this is my group. See this? I select my group. And this is everything that my group may have shared with me, right? So this files here, this files here, a work that was done by my group. Now, it's possible, it's possible for my group to select to create subfolders inside, right? So this is a different subfolders that my team created, right? Now, this is one thing what not to do. Nobody is going to save files here in the root of shared area. Do you know what's going to happen? Big mess. Your, uh, your work will be visible to everybody, to 600 plus users in the session, in, in the system. Anyone can modify your work. So when you come back tomorrow, it's not going to be there, right? So what I'm going to do to help you is this. If I see something in the wrong place, I'm going to put it away to my folder on my admin account, and then uh, you may need to contact me to get it back, right? I'm, I'm doing it not to punish anybody, but I'm rather focused on helping you guys to make sure that your work is there, nobody modifies it and so on, right? Okay, now, uh, how, how do we share the files? Well, to share the file with your team, you'll do this, watch. Uh, Suppose that I want to share this one, this file. Uh, I'm gonna do, well, I can move it, right? And to move something to the shared folder is this move. I do move. Now I'm on shared, I have to expand this. This is my group, I have to, exp this is my session, I have to expand it, see this? And this is my group, I have to select my group in here. And I'm gonna click move, important. Important, important, important. Do not uncheck this. Keep this inherit as is, okay? <laughs> you want to keep this inherit as is. Do you know why? Because if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you might end up losing access to your own work. I swear, I had students who did it. And then you will need to contact me to recover because in this case, this is not a deletion, but you might lose access to your own work. So, also to make sure that your teammates are able to access your files, 
keep this checked and do not change anything, right? Every file that you put in a folder, the permission for every file that you put in the folder will match the permission of the folder. I, I already took care of it. I mean, I will, I will be taken, I will take care of it for you. <laughs> not say it this way, because I have not created the teams yet. You have not been assigned to the teams, to the actual teams yet. What I just showed you, it was just a demo, okay? So now I'm going to click OK. Now, what I did was I shared the file with my team. So my teammate is going to do this. They're going to click on Shared. This is a session. And they're going to expand this session. They're going to click on the group one, and they will see the files that I shared here. This, this is a file, right? So whenever you are assigned to group, do this. Take the data set that you're working together, right? Put it in a, in a group folder and then see if you can see it. You want to make sure that as soon as possible that you have access to your folder because, trust me, we had surprises the day before our assignment was due. We had a lot of surprises that we don't want, right? Okay, so you're going to test your access immediately, okay? And, you know, usually this is a quick fix. Uh, if you contact me, if you don't have access to the shared folder, right, uh, when, whenever your TA or instructor notifies that the folders have been set up and you don't see your folder, contact me. And usually this is a very, very quick fix. I have a tracking file where I track who has access to which folder. So this is a very easy and quick fix for me, right? So anyways, here it is. This, this is a data file, right? And I need to show you the dependencies. Uh, now, take a look at this. Now I want to unshare it. I want to unshare it. Watch. To unshare it, I do this. I do move, move. And I'm going to move it back to my personal area. When I do this, now I'm going to get a warning. Uh, well, what this means is that if I have any displays or any storybooks or anything, uh, any discoveries in a shared folder that were created from this data set, they're no, no longer be valid. It's because when I move the data from shared folder to my personal area, my teammates are going to lose access to it because they, they cannot access my personal folder, right? So this is a message that you're going to get, but let's move it. Okay, <laughs> this is just a demo. Now, what else you want to do is you want to save copies of your work, right? So suppose that you worked on something, you worked on the discovery, right? And then you want to share it with your team. Uh, you, you can do this. See this? This is my new discovery set, right? This is a discovery that I created today. I want to save a copy just in case. I want to save a copy. Watch, I'm gonna do this, save us. Uh, I'm going to select the shared folder, right? And I'm going to select, see this, I expand this. This is my team, this is where I'm gonna save it now, right? I'm saving the work, a copy of this. <laughs> That's it, no? And you also want to make sure that, well, it did not ask me at this time, but sometimes it asks you about the permissions. Do not change the permissions. Let, let them be inherited, okay? Trust me, one time I was not careful and I lost my admin role just by accident, okay? So here you may lose access to your own data easily. So just, just I, to help you, I took care of the permissions. All you'll need to do is just uh, keep the checkbox checked, okay? So now, let me close this out, oops. Close this out, <laughs> right, close this. Okay, so I'm back at the landing page. And what I did was I saved the discovery in a, in a, in a shared folder, right? Okay, now, one important thing is that, uh, is this, there is a dependency between data set and a discovery. Uh, I would recommend that you put the data set that you're working with in a group folder and work from the copies that you put in a group folder. It's because uh, every discovery is tied up to the data set it was uh, built from. But the relationship is between 
the internal number every data set has an internal unique id uh, the relationship uh, between discovery and the data set is based on the internal id so suppose that i create a discovery from uh from this here from from this data set right uh, my discovery my visualization will be referencing this specific data set by internal number. If I delete this data set, my discovery will be invalid. Well, you might be thinking that what if I upload this data set again and use the same name? No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works because it's referencing the data set by internal number, not by the name. So if I delete this guy right here, everything that was built from this guy will become invalid. So similarly, if you use a copy of the data in your personal folder, right? Uh, and then if you moved only the discovery, you will be able to see it, but your teammate will not because the teammate cannot see the data that's sitting in your personal folder. Well, right now, what I'm saying might not be making sense, but it will once you start working on it. Okay, it will once you start working on it. Uh, but now you might be wondering why I have several subfolders in here. Well, I wanted to illustrate some uh, dependencies here for the storybook. There are some interesting dependencies that we have for the storybooks. Uh, here I have a storybook that is. Uh, well, this is a situation when my teammate shared the storybook. Well, they name it student survival, okay. But the problem is they did not share the data and they did not share the displays that were used to build the storybook. So this is what I'm gonna do right now. Well, when, when my teammate, the teammate ran the storybook in question, the storybook worked as expected because the teammate is able to access uh, pieces in a personal folder, right? But I cannot access other teammates' uh, personal folder. So this is what happens when Elena runs it, right? Okay, wait a minute. Huh? What is this? Zero data sets? Uh, well, I see two, I have two tab findings, right? Where does it come from? I have these two tiles, right? Okay. So this sounds right. Now, but let's see. What is this top findings about? Let me take a look at this. Ay, ay, ay. No displays can be found. Oh, oh, now I click here. Where is my data? Nothing. Why do you think is that? Oh, it's because my team member, my teammate didn't share any displays with me, right? All right, let's close this out. Let's do another attempt. And in this case, in this one, this is a goldfish storybook. Uh, this one is missing the data, but I've got my three displays in here. See this? This is a goldfish. And I've got my three displays here, and I've got the storybook, okay? So now let's see, maybe that will work, who knows? Let's give it a try. Okay, so, oh, I see a nice picture, good. Now let's take a look at this. Ah, oh, well, a minute. I have three tab findings. What what does it mean? Zero data sets, huh? Okay, well, let's see. Maybe that will work. I click on this. Now I'm gonna see a different problem. We cannot access the data, right? You'll see this when you work on your assignment. You'll see this. We cannot access the data, huh? What happened to my data? Well, let's call the teammate who created this display he or she should have shared the data, right? I click on more info and this is an error. So whenever you get this error, there could be two reasons. Reason one, the data was deleted, in fact, okay? Reason two, your teammates forgot to share it, all right? So this is a problem. Now, let me do this, let me close this out. Oh, actually, take a look at this. Well. Here, I see that I have three displays, but there is no data, see this? So this is a problem, right? Let me close this storybook. And also, in fact, if you go in, 
if you check this display over here, you will see the same problem. Right? This is part of your troubleshooting. I know I had this display. Let me see if this is going to work. Yeah, right. <laughs> It doesn't, right? Well, it does not work because I don't have, I did not share the data that I used to build this. Okay, so now you don't have to share the discovery It's because once you add the discovery to display, it sort of like gets, what do you call it, inherited? Well, it's not a good word to use, but you see what I mean, right? You don't have to share the discover. You have to share the data and the display when you share the storybook, okay? Now, uh, here, this, this one is correct. The Oreo storybook. Uh, okay, so this one, let's see. Let's see why is it correct. I click here, right? Here, well, these are my uh, top findings. Oh, I've got a nice image, but this is not the issue. See this, I have my top findings, and it's findings that I have one data set. Well, there could be more than one data set, but in this case, I have more than one. And then I go in here and I can check my visualizations. I can actually see them, right? This is my visualization. So here there is nothing wrong. And when I click also here, I will see the data. I see actually my data. Well, uh, you don't have to pay attention to what the actual data is. This storybook, at the time when the storybook was created, we were able to pull data from, the, from Twitter. So that's why you see this. But anyways, right now it's not an option, but at that specific point in time, we could uh, pull the data from Twitter. But for the purpose of this demo, let's just focus on the concept. The concept is that you have to share the display and you have, you have to share the data for this to work. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to, your teammate won't be able to see it, okay? So this is very important. Uh, another thing is that uh, at, at some point you could not save the storybook as a copy. So see this if now I'm in the edit mode, for instance, and the storybook is in a shared folder. Oh, now you can. See this, when I do save it, it's going to let me save it as a copy. Hmm. This is interesting because before, before I could not save the, I, there was no save as option on the storybook. So this, this is an excellent addition. Now I can save this as a copy. This is a good functionality because uh, you create a storybook, right? Before you put it to the shared folder, you always want to maintain copies of your work. This is a sad story, but I had a student accidentally deleting other students work the night before the assignment was due. But other student in question should have saved the copy, right? And then, the, uh, then uh, uh, put another copy in the shared folder. Okay, so let's close this out. Now I have to show you something interesting, but well, you're not gonna be able to submit this for grading, but sometimes it's a good idea to look at the samples uh, to see what you're gonna use for your, what you're gonna do for your own uh, project. Look at this, this is called the analytics exchange page. I'm going to do, oh, but before I do this, I forgot I have to be on my personal folder. I have to be on the personal, I'm on a personal folder right now. So I'm ready to do this. I'm gonna go to analytics exchange right now. And I'm going to find my storybooks, okay? Well, okay, let's pick something. Uh, See this, I can pick any of them. And uh, most of those are free. They should be free. And this is, in fact, this one, there is a YouTube video about this, about the maximum. So, maximum. so let me go ahead and I pick this expert storybook and I can import this, so I click on import. And what this will do is it will import the storybook to actually my personal area and I can uh, play around with this. I can just check, it gives me the ideas of uh, what you can do. Creating related asset means that it's creating a, a copy of the data set and uh, displays, and it will put it in your personal area. It will also create a subfolder called important, right? 
it's taken a little bit of its time, but <laughs> while it's taking its time, we need to, I want to show you what I have here. For each visualization, almost each visualization that we did today, I spelled out how to do it. On the slides here, I showed you the options. So that way when you, uh, when you watch the video, you can uh, see, the, when you watch the video again, you'll have the copy of the slides, but actually I did not go over all of the visualizations in the slides, in the slides, but you have, you have more examples here for you to review at your, at your uh, free time, right? If you have it, but this is for you as a reference. And the tree map visualization, etc. I just put some uh, notes and how to create tables and then we did the grid today. So grid is basically, you can also call it the cross tab grid. Uh, you have two measures, you have two columns here, right? So this is the class rank and this is the, the county. And here I've got the average uh, GPA. And then also what I did was I changed the background, right? I put one of my favorite colors here. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's do the, the, let's go back. Okay, here, this means this is complete. And see this, this is a, a work, work management storybook by Ma Maximo. And then there is, a, there is a YouTube video about this. And I put the, in a slide, you'll see the link, the video about the storybook. So you could play around and here, this is a logo. You actually, have an option to put a logo in there, right? Uh, okay, so here are the top findings and you can continue, you can ask questions, etc. But let's go back to the landing page. Let's see what it did here. This is my personal area. And, uh, oops, if I click on this, this, oops, it created this folder called imported. And in here I see this, well, what, what I don't understand is that where where are the displays before before it would put the displays as well. Not sure what's going on. Usually it puts the displays and uh, in, the, in the in the data. Well, it did not happen this time, but anyways, uh, that storybook was deployed. You not you not going to deploy the storybooks. You just going to create them and use them, right? Okay, so I want to make sure that I cover key points. Yes, so we talked about the uh, dashboards, right? And infographics. And what I did in here, I summarized the differences and similarities. So uh, both are interactive, both can have a predefined layout. You can use existing discoveries and uh, all of, both of this, when I create the storybook, I use the dashboard and infographic uh, as um, I use this. I use I use the dashboard and infographics inside of my storybook, right? Uh, you can use both, but the main difference is the number of tabs and how you apply the filter, right? Uh, now, I just put the steps on how to create the infographics. Well. I decided that it will help you to have it both in writing and uh, also the presentation itself, right? So here is, you can edit the infographics, such as rotating visualizations. You can move it back and forth, making the copies, deleting. So remember this is called, uh, what do you call this? The focus mode, right? So if I go back here to my personal and I'm gonna go to the display, then when I, when I go in here, see that this is infographic. Uh, when I open this up, I can select my I can select my visualization, and here I'm gonna go to something called focus mode. Now remember this: if I edit the visualization from discovery, uh, and if I make changes to visualization here, the change will be applicable only to this display. It won't affect the discovery workbook, right? So whenever I make a change here, right? Not at the discovery workbook. When I create a new display with the same discovery, the change that I make here won't be visible, right? So just remember the differences. If I, 
create the new discovery on the fly here. It won't be reusable. Any updates to the discoveries that I have here won't be reusable, right? That's, that's one main difference, okay? Now, here I can click on this, but not, yes, but I have to be in the edit mode. I forgot to say, this is important. In order to make changes, I have to be, my, sto my uh, infographic has to be in the edit mode. How do I know? See here, if, if I see the eyeglasses, I'm in the edit mode. And here, this puts the visualization in the focus mode, right? But what's in the edit mode? The edit mode is, a, is for the infographic. I can edit it. And similar, similar, you can do this. You can apply a single filter and you can also do the, the formatting, right? This is formatting. And then you can do the widgets. Uh, here, well, you cannot add the image directly, but you can put the link. But for the uh, storybook, right, for the storybook, you add background image directly. It has to be a direct image, not the link to an image, but image. Okay, so now let's hear. Well, usually when I do this presentation, I go back between slides and uh, bet between slides and the actual hands-on part. So you got you got this part right. I showed I showed you how to do how to create the storybook just by drag and drop, and uh, I showed you how to create how to add the notes. And this is a picture I was talking about. Usually I add this graduation picture to the uh, storybook. So this is a graduation picture, and then. In the past, what I did was I created a separate, I created a separate display for the GPA. Then I could have separate separate display to for the student uh, risk analysis, right? Analyze if the student is at risk of academic performance, and then I could have a separate uh, display with cost analysis, something like that, right? Well, usually when you create a project for your Assignment you want to narrow down. You want to focus either on the GPA or on the cost or on the risk, right? Or the something like that. You want to focus on one variable, right? But what I, I did here just for the demo. Uh, now here here I'm just showing you how to use how to look at the data in inside the data that was used to build the storybook, and it could be more than one data set. Just remember that, right? So here, basically, this this is just the, the the options. Remember when you click on the ellipses, there are some options, and you're gonna have rename, move, and delete. For the deletion, I want you to remember that you cannot undo the deletion. That's it; it's gone. Now here, well, well, here this is the analytics exchange page. Uh, this this is the page the page where we went to grab the storybook sample, right? So I mentioned that there are two storybooks. Uh, actually, there's two storybooks. You see examples on the YouTube. So if you're interested, you could watch these two videos. Okay. And here are some more uh, web web pages. There is a Compass to Success analysis. This is just a, a case study where the presenter discusses their, their storybooks that they created. Uh, here it is, there are a couple, there are like three videos, I think, or two videos here. So this is another storybook example where you can watch, you can watch the presentation. Uh, here, well, basically, basically here I'm explain, it's an explanation of the different permissions, just to make sure, just to give you an understanding. Okay, so, Basically, if you look at uh, my admin account, right, as an example, do you see this past semesters in here? It goes down all the way to fall 2016. Your access to these folders, fall 2016, and to the files in these folders is none. None means that you have no access, right? So for these folders, your access is none, right? That's what it means. View only, well, view only access allows you to view the data. 
So this is an example. An example is right here. So now I'm not on the admin account. And this is, a, this, is this folder. Everything in this folder, everything in this folder, you have a view only access. So you cannot upload the files, you cannot modify the file, but you can open it and save a copy, right? Or you can create a discovery based on it and save the discovery in your personal area, right? <laughs> this is what you can do, but nobody can make changes to it. Well, it said to view for everybody except uh, the administrators, okay? So now another, another permission, See, this one is gonna be view and edit. This is a permission you're gonna have on your team folder. So whatever you put in your team folder, you'll be able to see and it will be editable. But no way, you're not gonna be able to give permission to other teams to access data in your folder. No way. A full control, this is me. I'm able to modify the permissions on your folder. I'm able to uh, give you access and I'm able to basically anything, I'm able to see all your files in, in your folder, right? So full control is me. Uh, view and edit is you, your shared folder. View only is a sample data, right? And none is the past semesters for you. You cannot see them, right? I have full control because I'm an admin. You have none, right? So uh, basically, I'm here. I'm showing you again and again how, how, how to access your folder. So promise yourself or write yourself a note that as soon as you hear from your instructor or TA, right? Usually Kate, TA Kate is very good at it. Usually she notifies the students as soon as I am done with uh, setting up the these folders in, in Watson Analytics, right? So, so she usually sends me the group assignments and then I set it up and then I let her know when it's done and in turn she's gonna let you know when the setup is done. And as soon as possible, go in and check if you see your folder, your group folder, because, well, it's very easy to fix. I have a tracking file where I track who has access, who, who belongs to which team and which session. So it's, it's very easy. I can just look it up and do it. If I'm at the computer, it will be fixed in no time. Okay. Now, uh, here, um, I just put the steps on how to share files with your group. Right. And, uh, this is basically what you will see, how to look for the file. And notice in the, even in the shared folder, you have the same options, same uh, sorting options and same layout options, right? Okay, so, well, here are just basically the steps, right? How to move the file to the shared area. We talked about it. Now here, this, this is an example of what not to do. Well, because see the problem here, this is file, it's visible to everybody. So if you put this file in the root of shared folder, anyone can modify it. So it's like somebody stepping on your foot, you know, uh, you're doing the work and somebody is overwriting it. We don't want this to happen, right? So I'm gonna help you. I'm going to remove it, right? Or if you saved something in the wrong place by accident, go ahead and remove it. We're here to help each other. Uh, now you're gonna get this. Well, okay, remember this slide, okay? If you don't remember much, remember slide number 35 because this question is gonna come up. Uh, you're getting this error. No, ac no data access, right? This is similar to what I showed you earlier today. Uh, your teammate created the discovery, uh, created a visualization from the data file that it's on his or her uh, personal area, right? He or she moves a copy of the visualization to the shared folder. He or she is able to see the visualization without a problem because the data is in his or her personal area, right? When you log in and look at, the, at this visualization in the shared folder, you're getting this error. Why? Because you cannot see the file, the data file that is located 
in your teammates' personal folder that was used to build that visualization, right? So, well, you're gonna see this error a lot, a lot, right? It happens, especially as, you, as you're learning how to work in groups here, okay? Now here, well, well, this is a picture of the dependencies. Take a look at this. Discovery depends on data, right? Without the data, discovery is invalid. This dependency here, I demonstrated to you earlier. I showed you what happens when I have a storybook without this dashboard and data, right? I showed you what happens when I have just a dashboard and no data. And I showed you what happens when we have the storybook with dashboards, but no data, right? Well, this is, this is, this is what we demonstrated tonight, right? Well, well, just this is what I did. I put this diagram for you. So here, well, see this, you've got two errors. It means that your infographic could be based on more than one data set, right? And a storybook here, in this case, we've got two dashboards and infographic. Here, just the dependencies, right? So if this piece here was missing, then in this case, part of the storybook would be invalid. If I was missing only one dashboard, then part of the storybook would be invalid, not the whole thing, okay? Well, I just put, I just put this, a, a screenshot of these errors for you. So if you get the errors along this line, just remember that you may have forgotten to share. Everybody does it, okay? Well, see this? Do you see this? Well, well, you're gonna look for the signs, no data available message, right? Uh, so if you see this, if you see a message, no data available, then you will need to contact your teammate to upload the data. Uh, well, here, this is the fun part. Sometimes our data is located in a, uh, is in multiple files, like, ooh, let's go back to not admin account. Okay, here it, sorry, okay, this is not admin account. Uh, let me go back to personal. Okay, look, I have three files here. I have the sales data, I have the product, and I have the customer. Uh, this is how my sales data looks like. Uh, I'm gonna click on refine. So I'll show you the problem. Well, the, the problem is, look, I have a customer ID, right? I have the product number, but I, I need to know what my customer first name and last name, right? I don't, I, I don't understand what the customer ID is, right? I need to know somebody's name. So this is what you could do. You could do the join. So let's do, Look, I'm gonna click on a plus, and now I'm gonna select the data set to join with. In this case, I have it in my personal folder, and this is my customer. I'm going to select this and like this, see? It does not matter that the data has only a single sheet. I still have to do this. I'm gonna click on okay. Now, see this? I have this two here. Uh, Basically, what I would need to do is this. Uh, see this, this is customer ID number seven. I would have to go back in here and find my number seven to get the first name and last name, right? This is what I have to do and to get the phone number. And then I would have to grab another one here and look it up. Now, is it an efficient way to keep looking it up one at a time? No, right? So there is an alternative solution here is this. Here, I'm going to join these two data sets, these two guys on customer ID. Watch. Uh, here, this is sales and this is a customer. So what I'll do is I, I select this and I'm gonna drag and drop. This is a joining column. Well, instead of Go, going in and flipping the top, just looking up, right? Look, looking up the ID in the next, in, in here, in the customer's list. I want it to be there for me, right? What's an analytics did it for me? 
See that? So when I go back to my joint data and I have to minimize this, I can minimize this. See this? I have it here. It's right in front of me. And if you look at this, there is a different color code is used for each uh, data set. So I have the sales are in uh, maroon and this one is in uh, green, green color. Okay, so now notice that there is a customer, there is a customer ID, see this? Customer ID here and also there is a customer ID in red. So what it did was it took the customer ID from sales and matched with a customer ID in a customer. And for the purpose of analysis, you can also hide one of these. You could hide one of these customer IDs, right? Well, usually, well, first of all, you don't want this ID to be used as a driver, right? You want to uncheck this. You don't want it to be used as a driver, but you could also hide it. It's in here. You would need to click on the list of columns and uncheck, right? And uh, you have to save this, but I'll tell you this, to save it, you, you, you have to save it as a copy. Saving it won't work. You have to save it as a copy. <laughs> and let's say, save it sales customer. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Now, uh, it would have been nice if I could also grab my product number, <laughs> well, uh, product name. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I can join only two. I cannot join more than two at, at the moment, okay? I only can join uh, two data sets at once. Okay, so here, well, basically I'm illustrating there are different types of joins. You can choose, you can choose to select only the customers who, who uh, placed at least one order. Or you can uh, include all customers, even if they did not uh, place any orders, right? So there are different types. Uh, here, this is an example of Bill yeah. So here, basically, you, you are picking up equi-join, right? This is called equi-join also. When you're picking up only the customers who have uh, at least, who have purchased, who made at least one purchase, right? Uh, ultimately, you could have, alternatively, you could have some customers who have not purchased anything. And sometimes I, I want to include them as well. There is an option to specify the uh, join type. So if I go in uh, here, right? If I go in here, rather, I can open it and see, well, all the way at the bottom, there used to be an option to specify the join type. It's like, uh oh, it was there yesterday, but not today. <laughs> oh, maybe you have to select this. Nope. But anyhow, there used to be at least an option. I I do not see it right now, but well, <laughs> let me see. Let me minimize. <laughs> oh yeah, it's in here. See this? This is an option. <laughs> right now I'm doing the matching rows. Here I can do the um, rows in the first data, I can include all rows in the first set that don't have a matching row in the second. And the other way around, I, I want to include the customers that have not placed any orders, right? This is what it's gonna do now. See this, I'm including the customers and that customer never placed any order. See, this is what I'm doing. This is called the uh, outer join, right? You will see this in the later courses, but I, I wanted to show you that this is possible in here. Uh, all right, so this is a, let's say this is a bonus. I showed you that sometimes you could work with multiple data sets, right? And uh, this is the documentation page on how to do this. So, uh, and if you see, if you see this here, let me go back. Uh, do you remember the file types, right? Uh, CSV, etc. right? Uh, this file type indicates that you, your data is obtained through the join. So see that this is a little, yeah, this picture indicates that it's a join. See that if I hover over it, it says joint. Then if I click here, 
well look i have other i have options similar options refine uh this option is not working so don't count on it i can rename it i can put it in my shared folder and this one is going to give me the asset information it's in here well this gives me who created it which is me okay now uh, what else i did here <laughs> i put some links uh well this is a, this is also i believe they're also in a, a course content this is just basically on how to create the storybook and uh, how to use the storybook okay and there is a documentation that you could uh, read more on. So uh, since this is our second session, today I expected that some of you will bring questions. Is there any questions or anything that you would want to see? This is a good time to ask. Because sometimes this is what I really enjoyed when we have a little bit inter interactive second session when I had questions. Is there any visualizations that you want to see? Anything? Anything? And remember what you're supposed to tell your professors after this session, right? What's going on with the models? They were fixed, right? They were fixed. Okay, so uh, is there anything that you want to see going once? Let me see the, I'm going to check the chat because I don't really see, is there anything in the chat? No, nothing. Okay. Uh, Steve, by any chance, did you receive any questions? No, I didn't see anything. You must have been extremely clear tonight. Very nicely done. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and stop the recording and I'll, as, a, as always, I will send the link to the professors uh, and Yelena will send the slides to the professors and you'll be able to take another look at it. This is the fun part of the course, uh, I think. So have some fun with it, but try to find some ways to show interesting insights with your visualizations because that's really what it's all about. Okay, thanks. And let me uh, go ahead and stop the recording. All right, and that'll...